Hey YouTube, it is a gloriously rainy afternoon and my garden is enjoying a nice drink, but I'm about to head out to my greenhouse for the first time in a few months. It's not nearly the majestic space that it was just a few months ago in here. Between the months of February and April, I spend a significant amount of time in this space. I actually stepped foot in here today for the first time um, in at least two months. It was 120 degrees, so I got it all opened up. It's 90 now. It's pouring rain while the sun shines. I love that. Just had a little bit of farm excitement. Daniel jumped over a fence in the rain and had one of those really hard lessons where you learn that you're no longer 18 years old. Um, so, <laughs> thought he broke his leg for a minute, but he's gonna be okay. I'm a little wet. Had to go change shirts because I was pretty soaked. Now I'm gonna teach you how to start tomato seeds. Obviously, there's not like a right and a wrong way to do this. Um, I'm gonna show you how I do it and what has worked for me. And this is also a little different than anything I've ever done before because I generally start my seeds in February and it is now July. Now we have a long growing season in 7B. Our first frost uh, won't be until the end of October. We've gone into November before without getting frost. Right now, where the days are starting to reach 100, my tomatoes are dropping a lot of their blossoms because it's so hot, tomatoes really start struggling over like 90, 95 degrees. I am still getting tomatoes, however, I thought it might be cool to see if I could do a second round of tomatoes this year. With that said, um, even though we do have a long growing season, I figured out that I probably don't need to start any large slicer tomatoes since those are typically 80 to 85 day varieties. So I'm sticking with some smaller varieties, like some cherries and just some different things that I'm eager to try, I haven't tried before, um, but that I think that I'll have time to actually get some fruit off of it before it gets too cold for them to produce. And I figured since I was going ahead and starting seed, I would take the opportunity to show you guys how I do that. Now, um, my fall garden will typically all be direct sown stuff. Um, the tomatoes that I'm about to start will be the last seeds that I start most likely until spring. So I'll just show you guys what I've got here and just explain what you need to have on hand to start your tomato seeds. Hey, I've got some red uh, solo cups, a permanent marker, some marbles, I've got some potting soil, peat moss, and some perlite. Favorite soil mix to use is Bacto. It's for organic gardening, um, it's a premium potting mix. It's mixed with peat moss and uh, compost as well as perlite and some natural fertilizers. And when I use Bacto, I don't add anything else to it. Now today, I wanted to be able to buy things that everybody could get. Now I don't know how widely available Bacto is. I know that it's not available at all stores here. I get it at my farmer's co-op. Um, and they have it sometimes at nurseries and stuff. But today I just got a bag of organic potting mix from Walmart. And I went ahead and also got a smaller bag of peat moss and I had some perlite already. Basically what I've done today is I've taken two uh, parts of this mix and added one part of the peat moss and one part of the perlite and more than anything what you want for starting seeds is something that is light and airy well draining but that does have these components in it like perlite or peat moss that do retain moisture to allow your seeds uh, the moisture they need to grow starting your plants in heavy soils will keep them from growing what will happen is your seed will germinate and you'll get that little sprout with those really exciting first little leaves and then it just won't grow anymore. It'll stay like that and eventually it will die off. One year I started all of my seeds in garden soil. I just didn't know any better and I had gone and bought a bunch of these uh, six cell plastic things and put garden soil in all of them, started my seeds and they all germinated. I was so excited. I was thinking this is awesome and then uh, they didn't grow. 
for like four weeks. They just stayed the same. They didn't get new leaves. And I was like, well, this can't, this can't be right. And uh, someone actually told me that my soil was too heavy. So I transplanted all of them into uh, red solo cups. This is my first year to re use red solo cups and in a good loose potting mix. And just within a matter of days, they started to grow, get new leaves. And I had a really successful garden that year. And now I'm gonna show you something and I understand it is a little bit excessive, but you're gonna be nice and not make fun of me because like I tell my sons, that's ugly behavior and you are not ugly people. This is my tomato seed collection. Yes, just the tomatoes. I really love growing tomatoes. I've collected these seeds uh, over the years by saving my own seeds, by trading them with other um, heirloom enthusiasts on multiple places, specifically Instagram groups and Facebook groups. And I've also bought them from all kinds of um, seed places. Some I recommend more than others, but if you are going to be purchasing um, heirloom seeds and you're looking for rare seeds, of course, I always recommend Baker Creek first. Um, there is Seeds Now, uh, Pine Tree Seeds is really good, and uh, a recent one that I found that I like so far, however, I haven't grown any of their fruit, I'll be able to give a more comprehensive review after uh, this experiment and I grow these tomatoes, but it's Trade Winds Fruit. They have a lot of rare, really rare things I haven't seen elsewhere. Okay, so I'm gonna let you see inside my tomato seed collection and show you what it is that I'm starting today. I got this container at uh, Hobby Lobby. Okay, so these are just many different varieties. Um, some of them I only have just a few seeds of. Obviously, I'm not growing all of these at once. Um, I have grown several of them. I, I keep those separated out for ones that I trade. Um, and these are the ones that I'm actually planning on starting. But I'll just let you have a quick look there. These are all tomato seeds. I'm a little sheepish about that. I just really like it. <laughs> Okay, so today I am starting work release paste, cream sausage, roomy banjan, Polish linguisa, dwarf chocolate stripe, opalka. That was one that I heard in my gardener talk about a lot on a video and made me want to start it. Fahrenheit blues, that's a really blue uh, cherry tomato. Brandywine, dark cherry. Long keeper, now this is one that is said to uh, keep, stay fresh on the counter for up to 12 weeks. I figured that would be a good one to start right before winter. Um, Aunt Lou's Underground Railroad, Pinocchio Orange Micro, Dancing with Smurfs Tomato. Look at that. Those are awesome. Really a lot of anthocyanin. And Honey Drop Cherry, which that's an open pollinated hybrid that comes out of sun sugar. All right, so since my greenhouse is hot as all get out, uh, why am I starting my tomatoes in here? And do you have to? Um, I'm starting my tomatoes in here because they will be protected from the rain. It is hotter in here than it is outside. Um, but while they're starting and really fresh, I don't want to just leave them outside where a heavy rain might disrupt the seed. You could uh, still start them on your a windowsill. I thought about doing mine on the back porch, uh, close to where it would get some sun, but my back porch is pretty shaded. So for me, this is the best option. You could start them outside. I just didn't I didn't want to risk it, and since I have a greenhouse, I'm going to use it. I can always rely on Jeremiah to innovate and streamline anything that I do. I tend to do things the hard way um, and miss the obvious or less obvious shortcuts, but he figures them out. And uh, when I first started starting plants in solo cups, of course, you have to add drainage. And I was individually cutting them until Jeremiah walked into my greenhouse and saw me doing it for the first time and was like, no, no, no. <laughs> so this is his trick. Now all the cups have drainage. My lovely assistant. <laughs> How did I become Vanna White in this? <laughs> you don't need a handy husband, but it does help. Now that all of my cups have holes, I'm going to go through all of my seed packets and I'm going to write the type on the side of each cup. When I write the type there, I take the seed packet and drop it in that cup. 
just to keep them together and so I don't have to play a matching game here in just a little while. Now, take these marbles. I've got 13 types and so I'm gonna take 13 cups that do not have holes in the bottom of them. I'm gonna put one marble in each cup. I don't always do this. Typically in the spring, I start over 600 seeds because I not only grow a whole lot of them in my big garden, but I also sell them. And so um, it would not necessarily be feasible for me to double cup everything, put marbles in all of it. But on a small scale, it's a really good tip to do because um, what it's doing is allowing your water to drain out but have a little bit of a reservoir so you can go a little longer between watering. The reason why I chose to do this this time is because um, they're gonna be in this greenhouse where it is a little extra hot and that way I don't have to worry so much about them drying out and scorching. Okay, I like to get my soil mix in a bucket. Um, even if I'm not mixing anything up, if I'm buying a bag that I'm just using directly, I will go ahead and pour it in a bucket just because it's a little easier to maneuver. And what I will do is um, I'll come to whatever cup it is and I'll fill it um, almost all the way to the top with soil. I do pack it down just a little bit. You don't want to pack it a lot because um, you do want it somewhat loose. However, if you don't put a little bit of pressure on it the first time you water it, it becomes very displaced. So I'm not like putting all my weight into that. I'm just pushing it down just a little bit. Okay, I've got it pretty close up to the top. Now, I don't like to waste seeds. So typically what I will do in the spring whenever I'm starting is I'll put three seeds per cup and then when they germinate, I'll separate them. And I'll just get a new cup started, fill it up with soil, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll pull the root ball out, tease apart any seedlings, and put them in their own space uh, once they get their first set of real leaves. I don't feel like I have a lot of time now because as of right now, I mean, I want these to germinate so they're starting to set fruit when the weather's cooling off so I can get something out of them before it gets too cold for, for them to ripen. So today, I'm go I'm, I only did one cup per type and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put three seeds per cup knowing that I'm gonna pinch off two of them. This is really hard for me because I don't like wasting them. So essentially what I'll do is just poke, um, poke my finger down about this far. You wanna do a little less than half an inch. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. These seeds do want to grow. I've seen them grow in much harder uh, circumstances than this, and I've already done the other two. And what I'll do is I'll poke one hole, one hole, one hole, and do just kind of like a triangle so that if I do decide to save those seedlings, they're not growing on top of each other. If they're right next to each other, a lot of times you'll have, uh, they'll be too tangled together. Okay, here we have it. Now we're going to very gently water these. Um, some people at this point like to mist them as, or, as uh, to not displace the seeds. I, which is not that patient. So I just pour water on them. It has always worked for me. The point is to just get the seeds wet because that's what starts the process, is moisture and heat. Temperatures below 55 degrees are generally poor for germination, but also above 95 can be really bad for it as well. Right now in the evening with the greenhouse open, it's 90 degrees in here. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, um, and if it is pushing up into the hundreds, even though I've got it fully vented, I may pull them out here um, on this covered uh, porch so that they can be a little bit cooler while still having the benefit of not being able to be rained on. How often you should water your uh, started seeds is really dependent on uh, some other factors. Basically, you don't want too much water else the seeds will rot or um, they will experience what is called dampening off, which is basically where your plant shrivels up from the root uh, up 
because of root rot. Um, so you don't want them to be too wet. However, if they're too dry, they'll shrivel up. You can really tell by feeling your soil. Um, in the spring out here, before it gets really, really hot, I typically water mine about every third day. Right now, I might have to water mine every day just because they may they may be drying up that fast. You just want to fill your soil, your soil. You don't want it to be wet. You just want it to be moist. You can really tell if it's too wet or too dry. It's, it's pretty obvious. Uh, what about other containers? Obviously, a lot of people who garden are concerned about waste and using plastic cups is wasteful. Now, I have done a lot of different things. I've done the little six cell starters, uh, which I like those for herbs. I do not like those for tomatoes because they typically um, get too big too fast and you end up having to transfer those into another container, which in the long run ends up being more wasteful. Same thing with any sort of like pod or starter, you know, like little things that you buy that you water and they puff up they're okay um for me those are kind of hard to maintain the correct moisture i've found that this method for me is the easiest it, to maintain the moisture that is suitable for germination. Some people have suggested uh, recyclable paper pots, uh, making pots out of newspaper, which is very resourceful. I can't speak to that because I've never done it. The reason why I've never done it is because um, these shelves are all filled in the spring and I just simply don't have time to make 1,000 newspaper pots. So um, these, they're okay. They dry out really fast if you're going to use anything like this. Typically want to set it in a tray where it can kind of have some water pooling up that it can pull from. The argument that I have for Solo Cups is that they're reusable. Some of these cups I've used for three years in a row. And I think that for a small scale grower especially, uh, this really isn't that bad of waste. You know, one of these bags of cups for like 50 cups is like a few bucks at Walmart. These are just the Walmart brand ones and you can reuse them if you want to. And honestly, there's more waste of those in one night at a country music concert than I've even brushed in the last few years of starting, um, starting plants in them. For me, it's just another example of why moderation is important. Um, I don't buy those all the time. We drink out of glass for the most part or stainless steel. But as far as starting my plants, that has been the most economical route for me so far. So I've got my tomato seeds started. I'm going to keep an eye over them over the next few days just to make sure that they are doing okay with the heat and keep an eye out for germination. I should add that this is the exact same method that I would go about to start peppers or um, eggplants. Both of those are very similar. I, I do them all the same. Peppers do need consistent warm temperatures. If you uh, are starting peppers and it's not hot enough, if it's not over 55 or 60 degrees is really, really what they really need. Whenever you're starting them, it's best to get a heat mat and start those things. Tomatoes can benefit from a heat mat as well if you are in an area that is cool. I hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on these over the next few weeks on my vlogs and on my garden tours so make sure you check back if you want to see how they're doing and how those varieties turn out because I'm really excited to try all those I, all of those are new to me so uh, thank you guys so much I hope you have a wonderful day until next time